Welcome to Raw and Prophetic with your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Raw and Prophetic is where we are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we are prophetic. On this podcast, you will be encouraged through the Word of God to step in your purpose-driven assignment from the Lord and to be inspired and encouraged to be all that God has called you to be. So, welcome to our podcast. Here is your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Well, good morning, good morning to you on Friday. Yay! I am able to come to you another day of the week. I sure miss being on every day as I was in the year of 2022 or the beginning of 2022. But as you guys know, we've gone through some transition of moving and a few different things been going on. And we are here in Jacksonville, Florida. We are here in Duval County. And so by us being here, um, it's just having to get, get ourselves settled and everything and our work schedule settled and all those sorts of things. So I am able to come to you today. So I am so excited. Thank you for listening. Guys, listen, we are almost at 1800 downloads. Let's go for 2000 downloads. My goal is to reach 5000 downloads. So continue on downloading. Thank you for listening. I got something in store for you today. We're going to talk today about um, just the warfare of being consistent, the warfare of being consistent, because I really believe those of us that has been anointed, appointed and assigned by the Lord to do a work, we are definitely in a battle to be consistent because of the warfares that we have to go through, some of the obstacles that we've had to walk through. And different things like that. But I just want to just encourage you today that I hear the Lord saying consistency. And I even got the word of confirmation um, from a a church that we visited here in Jacksonville called Lion of the Tribe of Judah. The word of the Lord came to me saying that very thing. The Lord says, Katrina, you got to be consistent. You got to be consistent. So listen, guys, I'm excited to announce that. I'm get, before I go into um, what I'm going to talk about, um, I want to share some a couple of announcements with you. And so um, the announcements I want to share with you is first and foremost, the Lord had been dealing with me about getting things in order. And so as you guys know, I do different variety of things. And with me having Kingdom Girl Creations, which is my business, and then having Raw and Prophetic and Thy Kingdom Come Global Ministries, which my husband and I are the founders of that ministry. It's just that we got, so, I got so much. And so I was uh, talking to a friend of mine, um, Apostle Nikia, and I was like, you know, how should I do this? Because on my website, I had created a website for Thy Kingdom Come, of course. And then, of course, I did Kingdom Girl Creations. And then I tried to incorporate Raw and Prophetic with that. And she was like, no, you're going to have to separate it. So I was praying and I was like, Lord, what should I do? So... There is a company, and I want to share this with you for those of you who might be doing um, several things, multitask in the kingdom of God, like we are doing. Um, I want to share with you that there's a company called Linktree. And you just go to www.linktree.com, and it's spelled L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E dot com. Go to Linktree dot com. Or you can just Google linktree.com. And there you're able to put all of your links of what you're doing, your social media links, your website links, your business links, whatever links you got going, you can put them all in one uh, space. So my link is called linktree slash Katrina Garrett Ministries. I'm going to say it again. Linktree slash Katrina Garrett Ministries. And I am going to be changing my website link when I get off of the broadcast so you guys can be able to click onto the link tree. And when you go to the link tree, to my link tree, 
It's going to say at Katrina Garrett Ministries, but then you're going to see Thy Kingdom Come website. You're going to see Raw and Prophetic website, Kingdom Girl website. You'll find my Instagram, my Amazon storefront, my Raw Prophetic podcast. Um, you'll also find my Kingdom Girl uh, Creations YouTube, my TikTok page, um, even my bakery page, um, a place where you can sow a seed. Um, and uh, my, uh, what else? Uh my ministry page for Raw and Prophetic and my fake personal Facebook page. So all of that is all linked into one link and you can click there. But I want you guys to go to, when you go to Katrina Garrett Ministries under Linktree. So go to Linktree.com or type in Linktree. So you're going to type in www.linktr.ee slash Katrina Garrett Ministries. When you go there, go to Raw and Prophetic website. And when you go to the Raw and Prophetic website, scroll down to the bottom. And I want you to con- subscribe to my newsletter because the Spirit of the Lord has been unctioning me to send out emails, giving, you know, the uh, encouragement of the prophetic word of the Lord. And so I'm going to be sending you daily emails uh, with uh, just a small little, you know, prophetic word from God to encourage you into what you've been called to do. So I'm super excited because he's getting everything in order. I really believe that God is revamping some things in a lot of our lives, getting us ready, getting us to be consistent. Many of us have been in ministry for quite some time. I have, I've been in ministry for quite some time now. And being that I have been in ministry for as long as I've been in ministry. um, And I've gone through the stripping as far as my spiritual man, gone through the purging and gone through being broken and all of those things. Now the Lord is helping me to get more organized and to just put everything in order. Okay. And so I'm just excited. So today we're going to talk about the warfare of consistency. And so, um, I just want to talk, you know, real, just real. I want to give you a couple of scriptures and we're going to talk about being consistent in the importance of it. Cause the Bible has about 30, approximately about 30 scriptures that talks about it. But I'm not going to read all 30 of them, but I'm going to share with you a couple of the scriptures. Um, and so one of them I want to share is 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. It says, therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. And so I want to encourage you today that your labor is not in vain. You have been steadfast, but there's still a consistency that God is requiring from you. You've been, you've been, it's basically like you've been doing work as far as I'm going to do enough to get by. But I hear the spirit of the Lord saying it is time for you to rise up and to be more consistent and to pursue and pursue violently and what the Lord has ordained you to do. There are some of you that have books that you need to be writing. There are some of you that has different you know, t-shirts that you're designing, things that, that will edify and glorify the Lord in your life, in your ministry. But at the same time, it's going to bring you an income to where you don't have to use the word of God as a tool to bring in money or to use manipulation or slip into the diviners that diviners feed spirit to try to bring in an income. But God is going to bless your hands to be able to uh, bless the people of God and also to you be able to make things with your hands. Listen, the Proverbs 31 woman, that's what she did. The Bible says she rose up early in the morning and she used things to make. She went out and sold things and brought money home. Okay. So she just didn't just sit at home all day and lay around all day and look on social media and gloak at the things or covet at the things that other people are doing. You listen, you don't have to covet what someone else is doing. This world is big enough for every one of us to get a piece of the land. I'm going to say it like that. This is big enough. As a matter of fact, the way this country, the world has ran, has ran so unjust because you know what? There's so much land still not being occupied. Everybody can get their own home for free, their own land for free and grow their own crops. But of course they're not going to do it that way because you got rich, greedy people who want to be rich and who want to be on top and want to be better than everybody. And so they're not going to allow that to happen, but there's enough for everybody, even in whatever you're doing. Listen, I have a foster friend of mine 
She does t-shirts. I do t-shirts. I gave her websites of some of the places I get my material from because I'm not intimidated. She has her own style. I have my own style. And we have to stop allowing that to interfere with us. That's what's caused us not to be steadfast. What's one of the things that stumbles us from being consistent is fear of someone else outdoing us or fear of somebody else growing quicker than you. Listen, everybody doing cupcakes, everybody doing bakery. You go on TikTok, there's all kinds of people on there doing bakeries. People make, selling food from their house, which I don't see how they're able to do that, but they're doing it. And it's enough for everybody. It's enough for everybody. So you shouldn't allow what you see everybody else doing. Or the first thing that keeps not being consistent is, well, everybody's doing what I'm doing. Does it matter? You are your own unique person. And the reason why you're not growing and the reason why your business is not uh, not prospering is because you're so fearful and you're speaking defeat to yourself saying, well, it's not going to work. Anybody going to like me? Anybody? You can't do that. You got to listen. Paul said, my beloved brothers, be steadfast and be unmovable. I don't care how much you don't have the people supporting or nobody's watching right now or you're not getting. Everything has a small beginning. And small beginnings can be years. I, I, You're listening to somebody who has stunted their own growth in ministry and business. And I, I, I can be admit I'm woman enough to say I stunt my own growth because I was so in fear of what everybody's doing. Listen, this podcast, as I shared with you guys before, I've been doing this podcast for 12 years. You know what's so amazing was when I first started back doing the podcast, as I said, back in 22, and the Spirit of the Lord, January 22, said, I want you to be consistent in your podcast. I want you to get on it. I want you to do it. No if, ands, and buts, and don't worry who watches and all that. And at the time, I really didn't, understand, didn't even know how you even look at the statistics of, the, of how the podcast worked because... I just had it, you know, I just downloaded it and had it. And I was, I'm using Spreaker as my, as my platform to be able to bring uh, the podcast to you. But when I started being consistent, I remember seeing 22, 222 downloads. And then I go, I shared with you guys on, on a previous podcast that when I checked it, not to, you know, toward the end of 22, I saw that I had 1734 downloads and I didn't even know it. Didn't even pay attention to it. And so now I watch my statistics and I see how many. Since then, I've had over 80 80 downloads and I'm only bringing this podcast once a week. So, you know, I started out in 22 every day. But of course, when we had all these other things, and you know, isn't it amazing how God had to say, I want you to do this. And so I was thinking to myself, God, how in the world you told me to do this podcast? And we're having to move. And so in between moving, I would stop and do a podcast. But I kept going. I didn't go a month without doing a podcast. I made sure. Even if I came on once that month, I made sure that I was consistent. Because the Lord just told me to be consistent. He didn't tell me, He didn't tell me, you know, to do it every day. He just said be consistent. I started out doing the podcast every day when I wasn't working. Okay. But he told me to be consistent. So you got to sit down. Listen, you got to sit down, write down what, how you want to be consistent in what you're doing. Okay. If you are new to podcasting or you want to podcast, go to my link, link tree slash Katrina Garrett Ministries and click on raw and prophetic. And I do have a button that you can sign up for my podcast mentorship, which I am, um, I am mentoring a few people now in their podcast and got one lady getting ready to debut her podcast um, this coming week or next week. And so I'm super excited for her. So if you want to learn how to do podcasting, you can go there and I'll uh, connect with me and I can help you in that in that area. I want to read another scripture. Galatians 6 and 9 says, And let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap. If we faint not, or some terms, let's just say, if we do not give up, do not give up. The war of being consistent is giving up. I'm sorry, y'all. I got to turn my fan on. Y'all going to hear my fan. You're going to hear my fan because I'm getting hot. 
sitting here talking to y'all. Oh, just the heat flash, hot flashes. So I apologize for you hearing my fan in the background, but I cannot sit here any longer. I'm burning up. Okay, so don't give up. That is one of the wars in being consistent is I'm going to give up. Nobody showed up to the event. Nobody came on. Nobody listened to me. Nobody, you know, you can't give up. You got to be consistent. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to have mockers laughing at you. People are going to say, ain't nobody watching her. Why is she coming on every day? I can hear the people saying these things in the spirit. But let me tell you something. That's the voice of the enemy. And you have to learn how to drown out the voice of the enemy and talk as if you have already arrived. Listen, God is calling us to walk in dimensions, not in levels. One thing about going to another level, it actually takes years to get to another level because you're waiting on the next level. You're waiting on going to another level in the realm. But one thing Jesus did, he walked in dimensions. And Jesus, when the five, when the men, when the, when the disciples came to him and they said, "Listen, we only got five uh, loaves of bread and two fish," Jesus looked at them and he's like, "They looking like this is all we got." But Jesus was glory, and glory will take you to another dimension. Jesus took it and multiplied it a hundredfold. And so you got to learn how to walk into a dimension of the spirit realm. You got to learn how to walk. Listen, when you're walking in dimensions, you're walking, you're walking above a, an earthly realm of thinking. When you're walking above the dimensions, and I've learned that from my husband. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say, the Bible, what the Bible does say, speak those things as though they were. So when you are speaking and you're talking and you're acting like you're already at that place where you know you're going, you got to look at it like this. The world acts like that. You know how some of these football players get those women and they marry them because the woman has probably got 50 cents in her pocket, but she's got her hair, nails, everything is done. She's at those football events and she's already looking like she's somebody's wife. She's looking like I'm a football player's wife. And probably don't have any money trying to pay away to the school. I don't know whatever they're doing. But most people that don't have money already look like they have money because they know that that's where they're going. And I'm not saying it in a way of just being money, but in your ministry. If you know your ministry is going to touch, you know, thousands of people, you got to already act as if you're ministering to that capacity. Stop saying, well, it's just a few of us. Stop saying that people, listen, when people walk in your ministry and there's not very many people there, if they, if they say, well, there ain't nobody here, they're not there for God then. They're not there for Jesus Christ. Because one thing about Jesus, one thing about God, God is in the midst of everything. And if they say that they're believers of Christ, whether well, it's two or three, as long as it's two or three, he's in the midst. So you don't have to say to people, and I used to say it all the time, I was guilty of it. That's why I said, I, listen, I'm the reason why I have not gone. I have gotten prophetic words that I was stagnant. I stagnated my own ministry because of how I talked and the way I, and how I viewed things. Now I'm sitting here and I'm talking to millions of people. I'm talking to millions of people right now. That's who I'm talking to. I'm talking to you. You're one of the millions of people that my voice is going over the airwaves ministering to and talking to but if you sit up and you say well you know it ain't but you know and it ain't but five or six or, you're not you're not going to be consistent you're going to you're going to war against it your own self is that the people because people sit back and they sit and they yes they do they wait for you to fall but if they only fall if 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 you don't be consistent Okay, you got to listen. You have got to be faithful. Okay, got to be faithful. You have got to be unmovable. You can't grow weary in doing good. You got to be steadfast, and you got to be faithful. And you even got to be faithful in a crisis. You have to be. That is the hardest thing of being consistent. 
Because one of the things is, is that when we're consistent, we can be consistent when everything is going good. You can be consistent when you got money in the bank and everything is well organized and there has nothing has come to disrupt your life, to disrupt your routine. You can be consistent. But what if there's a disruption? What if a disruption comes? This is where we're really tested. We're really tested when disruption comes. That's when we're tested. It's when the disruption comes. Ephesians 4 and 1 says, Therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Paul is commissioning us to walk worthy of the call upon our life. And that's when you find out if your calling is worthy. When disruption comes. My husband and I have been in Jacksonville and we've had so many disruptions. It's unreal almost. I mean, we got things with illnesses in family. We got things with our finances. We got all sorts of things. I haven't said anything. I haven't posted anything on social media because it has pushed me into a broken place to be in the, in the presence of God and for, him to, for me to reevaluate what am I doing wrong. But the Lord had, had, listen, the Lord showed me it's not what you're doing wrong, it's what you're doing right. I couldn't understand because I'm like, Lord, I'm living for you. I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I've made mistakes. I'm not saying that I haven't hurt people in the past and people has, has hurt me. We all have hurt somebody and somebody has hurt us. It's, it's either or, okay? But I was like, Lord, why? And, and, and he had me in the book of Job, but I'm going to be sharing some things with that in the future. And there were some things that God really began to enlighten into me. A lot of times we think that the hedge is, when the hedge is removed, that, that we're not in the will of God. Let me tell you something. Being in the will of God doesn't always keep the hedge. Sometimes the Lord will remove the hedge to push you to be more in his will. Because when you're going through a storm and when you're going through things, it'll cause you to be steadfast and consistent in prayer. Because the Bible tells us that man has to always pray. So even in your business, even in your ministry, even in whatever God has called you to do, your book writing, whatever, you, need, you better stay in the presence of God and stay in prayer and be consistent with that. Let your relationship, because let me tell you something what consistency does. A lot of people are consistent in ministry. A lot of people are consistent in business. A lot of people are consistent, but their consistency is not in the presence of God and their intimate relationship. Your intimacy and your relationship has to be consistent. When God tells you to stop, you stop. When God tells you to go, you go. Okay. There are people who are very, very disciplined and consistent in doing work. But they're not, they're not consistent in their relationship. They can come on Facebook every day and pray for hours and never once spent time in God's presence alone. Didn't even spend five minutes of prayer, but jumped on social media and praying like they're doing this great work. God don't honor that. He don't see that. There was no consistency. And that's, those are the people that God's going to take apart from me. They did the work, yes. You bless people with your prayer. Do you, you think that because you didn't pray for God, you didn't pray before you get on social media, do you really believe that God ain't going to bless them people through your prayers? He going to bless them people. He going to bless them through your prayer. You just ain't going to be blessed. You, you're going to miss it. You're going to be told, to be, you're going to be, you're going to be told to depart from the faith. You know what, you know what, you know what Jesus is going to tell you to depart from me? Because you already parted from him. You were so focused on ministry and business and focused on everything else, but you forgot about your first love. So one of the things you have to understand is being consistent is not just being consistent. The warfare of our consistency is not just in business, but in relationship with God. Asking the Lord, is, is this what you want me to do? Is this what I should be doing? Is this okay? Am I in the wheel? Am I in the vein? That's what your, that's what your consistency has to be. It's not just... Oh, I'm going to show everybody that I'm anointed. I'm going to show everybody that God is with me. That attitude will, will send you to hell quicker than anything else. Because everything that you're doing, you're doing it in vain. You're doing it to prove to people. And you don't have to prove God is with you. If God is really with you, if Jesus Christ is really with you, if the glory of God is resting on you, it's evident. The evidence is already there. You don't have to open up your mouth. This the presence. You being in the room, people can feel him. That's walking in a higher dimension. 
When you're walking in a higher dimension, you are walking heavenly. Not heavy in the spirit, but you're walking heavenly in the spirit. You're keeping your mind on the things above. You're keeping your mind in Christ. You're not moved by the things that, that's going on in the world. You know, my husband tell me, you got a weak mind. I said, no, I don't. Because like my husband, he'll, he'll be watching certain stuff. And I said, I can't watch that stuff. Oh, your mind weak. I, no, my mind ain't weak, baby. My mind is sensitive. My spirit man is sensitive to some certain things. Sometimes when we listen to certain things, especially the news media, that new the news media is straight up demonic and it will try to it will try to put in your spirit fear. Do you realize that you can be you can be right, okay, I'll give you an example. You say, okay, I'm gonna write my book today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set a schedule and I'm gonna write my book and I'm gonna do this, God, I'm gonna stay. And and so you're focused. <coughs> you know, and you might not be an experienced writer. I'm talking to an experienced writer. I ain't talking about experienced writers because experienced writers, I'm not saying they don't have struggles, they do. But an unspirit ex- unexperienced writer like myself, somebody who doesn't have all this education behind, I don't have the alphabet behind my name. The only alphabet I got behind my name, I got to say this. I got to say this. The only alphabet that I have behind my name is a PhD. Prophetic Healing and Deliverance. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to say that. But, you know, you, 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 you are an unexperienced writer. And so you don't really know how to write. But you made up in your mind, okay, I'm going to do this. God, I never wrote a book before, but I'm going to try this. I'm going to do it. And you go to the news channel or you got the news on and they talking about this person died. That's the happening. This is going on. Global warming and Korea and Russia. Right then, a spirit of fear was released into your spirit and you don't even know it. And then all of a sudden you find yourself saying, ah, I can't do this. I can't do this. Or, ah, man, or you, you, you find excuses, uh, excuses. Oh, you know, well, I need to do this. Or I need to be doing this. And you keep looking at that type at that at that keyboard saying, I need to be sitting down about my book. And then you start making excuses. Well, ain't nobody going who I'm gonna get to edit and how I'm gonna do and all these questions. Because you opened up yourself to the spirit of fear by listening to what the world is saying, and you wasn't steadfast. You didn't have your your your, your senses focused on the spiritual things on the kingdom. It can happen just that quick, y'all. Before you know it, you don't even know where it came from. And you're saying, well, wait a minute. Last week I was motivated. I was ready to do this thing. Now all of a sudden I'm afraid to do it because you opened up your spirit. So there's certain things I don't watch. And my husband, he watches this stuff. I walk off. I go in the room. You know, because he, we do, we two different people in the kingdom. He got his walk. I got mine. But what I'm saying to you is that is one of the warfares of being consistent. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful who, you, and another thing, be careful who you share your your visions with, your dreams with. Even when you go to these vision and dream and these vision boards and parties and stuff, you go on with your friends. Make sure you focus on your vision, because sometimes these vision parties, people are looking at everybody else's vision, they like, well, her vision better than my vision, and her vision is this vision, that vision. Don't compare yourself to nobody else's vision. Don't compare yourself to anybody's vision. Focus on the vision that God gave you. Stay consistent in it. And stop warring against yourself of who you are and what God called you to do. Nothing is too little. There is nothing too small for the Lord Jesus. Your small little itty bitty thing is so big to God. And that's what you need to be focused on. Okay? You got to be consistent. And I hear the Lord saying consistency. Being consistent in what you're doing. I've been praying. I've been asking the Lord... Okay, now I've been I've been consistent and, and do it at the pace. Since I've been back in Jacksonville, I, right now, me and my husband, we're living on the edge. Number two, we are having faith in the crisis. But we are trying to be consistent in what God has called us to do. And so, you start off like small. I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to come back on and do an uh, raw and prophetic once a week. So, I, I set aside Tuesdays. And I set it aside. And my job... Has called me and tried to say, you need to come to work. I say, no, I can't. I got something to do. You know. And so I um, 
don't I, I just stay consistent on uh, being Tuesday. Well, I was off today. My schedule, I'm just going around. I've got my iPad planning and everything. Okay, I said, I was going to come on today. So I'm up at the two days a week. I said, okay, Laura, I want to go now two days a week. Is it okay? Should I go two days a week now? So I'm bringing it to you two days a week. And then eventually, as the Lord advances, as the Lord increases, as God blesses, I'll be back soon to my five days a week. I'll be back soon, but I am. But take it at a pace. Go at a pace. Listen, God doesn't care about your pace being being slow. Not, not I ain't saying slothful, but go at a pace. And as you go at a pace of what God's telling you to do, and you're just being consistent with it, you don't have to run and be all fast. Just walk, walk with the Lord, walk in the heavenly realms with Him, walk in the dimensions with with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he can supernaturally do things to turn things around in your favor. Walk with him. That's what you do. Amen. Because let me tell you, we live in a different time. I don't know why every time I turn this on, I'm sorry, y'all. Every time I turn this on and I go to turn the value and just stop. (laughs) So, hey, as I said before, I think I did a podcast last year. Don't get mad if it's not perfect because one thing about it, God can still get glory out of our imperfections. Okay? He can still get glory out of our imperfections. Everybody in the Bible, that's, let me tell you something. One thing about the world, the world strives on perfection. And they are, and it's so far from perfection, it's unreal. If you look at the football teams and you look at the NFL and you look at the Emmy Awards, everything is done so perfected. It's done so perfect. But uh, sadly to say, most of those people are going to hell (laughs) if they don't repent. I'm not judging anybody. But what I'm saying is that perfection can cause you to lose your place in the kingdom of God. So we strive to be perfect. We strive for it. Always strive for perfection, but don't be perfect. Nobody's perfect, okay? So as I was saying, as you're warring against being consistent... I just hear the Lord saying, take it day by day, but just don't stop. Okay? Don't stop. Listen, in weight loss, whatever you're doing right now, I'm in the process of going through retransitioning my body, and I'm going day by day. You know, and guess what? God is teaching me. I I, want to share this. I was tempted by my husband the other day. He said, you want this? You want me to stop by this cheeseburger place or Philly steak cheese burger places up someplace and he said cause I know you're tired and you didn't work and I was like mm-hmm. and so I went on and I said well what's the name let me see you know their website or give me the name of the business and it was called Charlie's Philly steak and cheese or something like that so I while I was talking to my husband on the phone I went to their website to see if they had any healthier options and I saw they didn't have anything I said honey this stuff right here give you high blood pressure and all uh uh uh-uh. I said, just come on home. Uh, we'll, I'll make a salad. We'll have a salad. Because um, now I keep salad stuff in the freezer, refrigerator. So if I, you know, I can cook healthy things, but sometimes I don't feel like cooking healthy things. And this is what happens. When you don't feel like cooking healthy things, you go to and, buy, and you buy food. You buy restaurant food. So what I do now is if I don't feel like cooking, I just whip up a salad. The salad will take but a few minutes to do. We already have our boiled eggs and everything pretty much in there cut up. So we just throw it in the bowl and eat it. And I'm content with that. I, I'm content with that. And so, you know, but, um, yeah, you just got to be consistent. And so even in, in everything you do. And like I said, I just shared that little temptation. You know, and my husband, you know, he's the first one hollering. You know, you need, you need, I'm praying you need, to get, you need to get some weight off. You need to start walking. But you offer me to get, you, you won't offer me a burger. <laughs> but I resisted. I resisted. I said, nope. I said, I ain't eating this. And plus two. I am pretty much getting away from eating a lot of fast food because fast food is not good for you at all. It is not made to give your body what it needs. Your body needs nutrition. Your body needs greens. Your body needs juices and celery and beets and carrots and all those things, okay? Anyway, I don't even know why I went there, but I'm just saying, whatever you're doing, just as long as you're being consistent with it, just be consistent 
and what God has given you to do. And I tell you what, you'll see results. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you the results going to happen overnight, especially in ministry. Especially in ministry. Ministry, you have to, I keep telling everybody, it takes 20 years to develop it as a prophet. It takes 20 years to develop in the fullness of your prophetic ministry. 20 years. Why do you think most prophetic people are older when they when God begins to branch out their ministry? Because they've been a prop there was a prophet in their 20s and 30s. But they had to go through being perfected and being the character being Listen, the character had to be put in alignment. God had to develop their character as a prophet. Not the prophet, but the character of the prophet. And so one of the characters of a prophet is consistency. Be consistent in what God has told you to do. Don't be discouraged or worried about what everybody else is doing, but focus on your assignment. And the Lord will bless you. Amen. He will bless it. So, Father, we just thank you. We bless you. We give you praise and glory. And as we be consistent in what you have ordained us to do and steadfast and unmovable, we know that you will bless. Help us to be consistent. Help us to be steadfast because we don't want anything that we do be in vain, but to give all glory to your son, Jesus Christ. And we ask these blessings in Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> Thank you for listening. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Allergies. Um, to raw and prophetic, where we are real, we are anointed, we are women. And listen, don't forget, subscribe to the newsletter. Go to linktree slash Katrina Garrett Ministries. Click on the link, raw and prophetic website, and sign up now. And as I always say, be blessed and be made whole.